Hey Buns, today I want to share with you some of my favorite and most often used websites for Final Fantasy XIV, ones that I absolutely cannot live without, and I can't imagine how some people play without using some of these websites. If you're coming from World of Warcraft, you might be used to using Wowhead or Icy Veins or other sites like that and not sure where to go for Final Fantasy XIV information, so that's why I wanted to make this list for you today. I feel like it's especially important for a game like Final Fantasy XIV where we don't have add-on support to show you... Uh, uh, extra information within the game, we tend to rely more on these websites. So let's get started. The first website I want to talk about covers the true end game for Final Fantasy XIV, and that is the Eorzea Collection. That's fxiv.eorzeacollection.com, and it is amazing. Um, the first thing that I'll show you here is the gear sets database, where you can just click here on gear sets and look through models for various things. So let's say I play dancer and I wanna see raid gear that I can be wearing. I'm, let's say for just for the sake of, I'm level 70. And so this is gonna show a list and I can click up here for female so I can see how it's gonna look on a female character. It's gonna show me uh, models for all the different raid gear for dancer, that being my filters here. I can also click on it and it will tell me where it is from. So this comes from the Orban Monastery, level 70 raid for 24 players. And it shows you the individual pieces by themselves. So of course you could do that for any job and it's just very, very convenient and cool. All right, up here, if you go to Glamours, you can just look through to see what Glamours people have uploaded recently. This is amazing. The mask. <laughs> you can come here and just look for um, inspiration, ideas maybe. You can work around a certain body piece. Like let's say you have a <laughs> new subligar that you want to work, make create a Glamour around. I'm gonna put that here in the legs, apply filter. And we can see what sort of outfits people have come up with using a subligar. Let's say I want chocobo, fat chocobo head. <laughs> so, a uh, lot of great, great ideas here. The mighty chocobo warrior. Like, <laughs> you can come in here, you can have a really good time hunting down Glamours for yourself. This is so good. <laughs> the next website I want to talk about is saltedxiv.com. I'm sure that I've referenced this site in previous videos and will very likely be continuing to do that in future videos. And that's just because it is such a convenient resource where a lot of different resources have all been gathered together in an easy to read, easy to navigate format. There are job guides listed here, job guides sourced from the Balance Discord community. Now that's a Discord, not a website, so I didn't include the Balance on this list because we're talking about websites, but um, all of those guides created for the Balance are here and easy to find, easy to navigate. There's also encounter resources, so you can look at any savage fight, click on it, and there's video guides, text guides, the party finder macros. NA, I'm <laughs> looking at you, NA. You could just easily copy it just like that and use the macros. Uh, there's also timelines for the fight, which can be really helpful if you're trying to like work with your group to line up buffs. Toolboxes, toolboxes are wonderful for uh, communicating with your group in a really easy to understand way. So that's for every fight. There's a lot of different strategies on there so you can just sort of see what is going to work best for you and your group. Quick note that the caster guides here are created and hosted by Ock Morning, which I'm going to talk about now. They have guides not only for Summoner, but also for Black Mage and Red Mage, so all the casters. And it seems very intimidating at first, but I think that the way the information is presented is very digestible. I spent a lot of time looking at the openers uh, timelines here, looking at the rotation two minute circle thing here and reading through all of this stuff about Summoner. But it's the way that it's written is very clear. It's easy to digest. It might take you a while, <laughs> but at least the information that's here is, is 
easy to understand. So um, uh, this is the first place I direct people to when they're trying to learn a caster job, especially summoner. So I absolutely had to put this one on the list. The next website I want to talk about is ffxivcollect.com and it is what it sounds like. Here you could um, sign in using Discord and track all of your collections of mounts, minions, orchestrians, and other various things you can see here on the side. Minions, it will show you, you know, where to get them from. You click on it. It's like Wind Up Gaia it's from Eden's Promised Eternity. And this takes you straight to Garland Data, which I will talk about in a second. I'm not ready to talk about that yet. A fun thing that it does is show you what is the percentage of people that have this particular item. I, I don't know where they get this information. It might be just from people. I don't know if it's from people that have signed in or from some other means, but it's kind of interesting to see like what are the most popular mounts? How rare is that mount that you just got? And, uh, you know, filling out your own collections here. So the next website I want to talk about is Garland Tools. This is the one that we saw pop up a moment ago when I clicked on that minion to see where it comes from and it linked to this database here. This is a beastly website. Like there is so much information here and there's so much you can do with it. And um, I've only, I feel like I've only just begun to scratch the surface of it now that I'm using it more lately uh, but I will just kind of briefly take you through what it what it can do some of what it can do so the FX of you Fisher part shows you you know various fish um, what bait you might need for them where to uh, catch them from I use a different tool for this personally which I'll talk about Garland Bell is excellent for gathering at timers this has quickly become one of my favorite uh, websites for checking the timers of various items that you might want to gather. So at first it looks really overwhelming if you don't know what <laughs> what you're seeing here. You see all of these that are green and they have five minutes left. So if they're green, they're up. You can go and gather all of these right now. Let's say, oh, I only want to gather stuff that's going to give me white scripts. So I'm going to click here. And all of these could give me white scripts. The, this one is up and it could give me a white script. So I'm going to click on it. I'm going to put it in a new list called uh, uh, wh white scripts gathering. Okay. Woot. <laughs> Woot script. So here you can see um, here it is on the map. I can turn off the map if I want. But it's nice. So it's up right here on the timeline right now. This is Aorzea time in the top left. And so this spawns at 12 p.m. and 12 a.m. So um, I just really, what I like the most about this is that it's very visual, <laughs> visual to understand the information. Like there's this giant timeline at the front, spinach, spinach. And I like the green things ticking down and uh, the red one means it's going to be up soon. Also, you can search for gold saucer gates, set timers for yourself on that. Also shows hunt timers, though um, I don't tend to use that. I tend to use Discord for that. So yeah, that is the Garland Bell, and uh, it'll make a little sound if you let it uh, do the notifications. It'll give you a little buzz whenever something is up that you've been tracking. Next, the Garland Data. The Garland Data. So this is stuff I clicked on earlier. I'm just going to... So it's a huge database that you can search for anything at all in the game. So I'm going to look up uh, maybe a dot mask and draped top. That cute top. You can... Uh, see that you know you can sell it on the market board a weaver can craft it using this book here's all of the items that you would need to craft it if you have this book and you're a weaver you can start collecting things that you need and uh, let's say okay well I have my two sea swallow leather and now that's removed from the materials that I would need you could make a new group let's say you want to craft some exarch gear there's a casting coat. Let's put the casting choker in there. Just these two for now. Eh. You can just click and drag. And it will show you, well, now how much all of this that you would need to craft it. It's all, like, just adding up automatically, which is really cool. One cool thing you can do is check out the patches and look at what was new stuff that has been added in the new patch. So items, what's been added in the latest patch. We can look through minions and see... There's a few minions that were added. I'm going to check out the Golden Beaver. And sources and uses. It's from Instance Coffer in the Shifting Weeblets of Leah Gia. So that's really helpful information. Now, maybe you don't know what, what that is. So what are the Shifting Weeblets of Leah Gia? Well, you can click on the new uh, little box. 
click on this cog in the top right and open on Gamer Escape. Usually, Gamer Escape does have some information about how to actually enter a dungeon or raid or something of the sort. And indeed, if you scroll down, you'll see. Get some information that, oh, well, you need to find and open treasure coffers from on your skin treasure maps. Uh, my only gripe <laughs> about this is that uh, I know, just be, from my own experience, that sea swallow skin drops from mobs in the Tempest. But that doesn't show here because you can buy it with currency. So it's like usually if you can buy something with currency, it's not going to tell you uh, where to get it here on Garland data. But you can open on Gamer Escape. If like, let's say you don't want to spend that currency, you can just double check here and scroll down and see, uh, well, it's dropped by monsters. Tempest Swallow. Tempest Swallow. Drop. I wish that information was on Garland data, but it's really not that big of a deal. What I love about Garland data is that you don't have to have 10,000 Gamer Escape tabs open because previously I had been using Gamer Escape a lot. Now I've transitioned more into this website. Um, I will talk about Gamer Escape in a moment. Uh, but this is just more convenient for me to have everything in one spot. I just, I think it's a lot more neat. Keeping track of things. That's what this website is about. It's about keeping track of things. So yeah, of course, uh, I did mention in Gamer Escape quite a few times whenever I was talking about Garland tools because I kind of use the both of them alongside each other now. I showed you how you can use FFXIV Gamer Escape to search for a different item, scroll down, see who's selling it see if maybe monsters drop it and what uses it can have. Gamer Escape also has a lot of excellent guides here, like progression and level locked content. This is really helpful where you can just check every level. Like, did I unlock this stuff? Do I want to unlock this stuff? Another guide that's on Gamer Escape that I use that I actually have bookmarked is for the resistance weapons. Keeping track of all of the resistance weapon quests. Okay, which step is called what quest? The Abnerian scale powder, that's resistance is not futile because like if you're working on several relics, the quests, you're not going to remember what the different quests are. And so it's just nice to have FXP Gamer Escape as a resource that's always up to date. It's an easy to search wiki as well. If it's like if you want to use it, maybe instead of Garland tools as a database. And it has many, many uh, really useful guides here also. So a minute ago when I was talking about the phishing section on Garland tools, I said that I don't use that. I tend to use a different site. And that is a site I want to tell you about now. This is n.ff14angler.com, aka Cat Became Hungry. And it is incredible for phishing and figuring out stuff I would never figure out on my own. <laughs> like, where do I get this fish? What bait do I need? I don't know any of this stuff naturally. So I check here. Uh, so the other day I was looking for this unidentified flying biomass, where to find it, and it tells you um, when is it often caught, what times of day, where do you catch it. So it's caught here in the habisphere. I'm going to click on that. So not only do they show you a map of where you need to go, there's also photos of where you should stand which in this case was really helpful to me because I was running all over the place till I noticed that I should check the photos. It tells you all the things that are caught in that area. And it says what bait you need. So for this one, you need red balloon. Yeah, I love this website. Every time I have to go fish something, I go straight here first. Remember though, you will need to turn off your ad blocker to access the site because it's dependent on ads to function. So the next website is significantly more simple than anything else that I've shown you. And I couldn't live without this website, though. I need it because time zones are hard, as you may have discovered, trying to communicate any time zone to anyone that doesn't live in your time zone. What is the current event? When will it end? What is the countdown that it will end? Um, usually they also have these for patch days, like how long till the patch day. Um, but usually important events are listed here in a countdown type format. The next website I want to talk about is n.ff14housing.com. Now, this is really helpful for looking to see what uh, different furnitures look like in the game. So here's the Mary Mog bed. You can click on that and it just shows you pictures of it. And it will also show you related furniture. So like different kinds of beds, you can search through the furnishings for like it says here, you can chair slash bed. If you're looking to see what your options are in a really convenient way. I know that in game, there is an option 
if you're standing inside a house to like preview different housing items, but sometimes it's just easier to be able to look at a glance at all the different uh, chairs that there are, for example, or benches. The next website I want to talk about is the Hunt's Path site. That is ffxivhuntpaths.com. So uh, this one is for Shadowbringers, but you can change it to whatever expansion you're doing the hunts for. And uh, after you picked up your little hunt marks from the hunt mark area, assuming you've unlocked hunts, Let's say, for example, I had several in, in one zone that might be a better way to see what it does. I've got a five in Lakeland. So here it shows teleport to Austell, one to two. And then from here, you can just teleport straight. So that's why it's blue here, because you're going to be teleporting to three, Fort Job. And then go this way, kill, this way, kill. So it's, it's really easy to follow and will make your life much easier. So those are all the Fall Music 14 websites that I personally can't live without, that I love, adore, cherish, and use very often. However, there are a couple of other websites that I wanted to mention as like honorable mentions because they are extremely helpful to many people who can't live without them, but they might not just, they might not be for my particular needs. The big one that I really wanted to talk about is Teamcraft, FFXV Teamcraft. This is mostly for crafters, it's ffxvteamcraft.com. I've dabbled around a little bit in the past, mostly when I was doing leave quests while leveling my crafters. This is really handy where you can just go down here and let's say I'm leveling goldsmith. Let's say I'm looking for a level 60 to 70 goldsmith leave quests. Here they are and uh, it will tell you how much XP you would get, where did, that you would need to deliver the item. And uh, let's say I want to make these trifane earrings of healing for this leave quest. I can click the plus sign to add it to a list. And that is really what this website is all about. It's about making lists of various crafting stuff. Um, so I'm just going to write leaves for this list. It says one item added to the list, leaves. I'm going to open it up. And this shows me everything that I would need to craft that thing that I added to the list. Where to gather the things that you might need. Where the vendors are for stuff that you need. You can also use it as a crafting simulator. Um, I know that there is crafting simulators in the game. But this one might be a little bit easier to work with and faster to work with and more efficient. I'll show you an example. So for the grade 4 sky builders rope, let's say I'm going to try to craft this. And uh, I'm bad at crafting. I don't know what I'm doing. So let's <laughs> let's go through this anyway, just so I can show you how this works. Okay, uh, so we're gonna do mm, manipulation. <laughs> Inner quiet. Please do not craft like this. Do not do what I'm doing. I'm just I'm showing you how it works. Um. All right, done. Uh, wait, no, it's not done. <laughs> we need that's only quality. Okay, let's get it done. All right. So this is a, just a trial, like this is just simulating what the craft would be like in the game. But one thing that's really helpful about this site, especially if you're new to crafting like myself, this thing here, rotation tips. So if you're doing something that could be done better, you can click on this right here and it will give you a very helpful tip. You should, have, you should use the durability restoration action at step one that I used, okay, later in order to avoid wasting durability restoration. So I had used manipulation. This restores durability after each step. But then I used a couple of other things that buff me and don't actually reduce durability. It can just sort of point you in the right direction better than straight up trial synthesis would in game. And lets you play around with it better. You can see other people's rotations that they've thought of for different things. So you could type in, I don't know, um, eh, grade for sky builders stuff or anything here. And um, you can look at the different rotations that other people have come up with and work with those with your own stats. Of course, you need to put in your stats for your character. So yeah, sharing rotations, building rotations, doing uh, simulations and uh, getting all of your lists together for various projects. There's even a commission feature where you could commission a crafter to make some stuff for you or if you're a crafter, accept some commissions. Uh, I haven't tooled around with that too much obviously because I'm not much of a crafter but it is definitely something worth noting and something worth looking into. Another honorable mention is the official Final Fantasy XIV Lodestone page. This of course has all the latest news on it and uh, I'm putting it 
as an honorable mention because I don't really use it that much, uh, though I do often recommend the community finder feature to people uh, who are in the sh coming to the stream and saying that they can't find an FC or they don't know where to find a, a link shells for various things. Like you can definitely go uh, to community finder and search there for your data center. So that's an honorable mention. Lodestone, especially Community Finder. Are there any Final Fantasy XIV websites that you use often, but I, maybe I didn't mention on this list? Or are there sites that I did mention that maybe you're using in a different way or that you are using in the way that I tend to use it and it's just great? It's made your life better, easier in Final Fantasy XIV? Let me know in the comment section down below. If you like this video, please consider supporting the channel on Patreon or on Twitch. You can also support the channel for free by clicking the subscribe button or by sharing this video with your fellow warriors of light. Thanks again so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.